Today we're learning how to lay out and cut common rafters using a framing square and two simple equations. Gable roofs like our mock-up here are made up of common rafters, which are rafters that come 90 degrees off the ridge board. And in order to know the total height of a roof and the length of the rafters, you need two equations. The first equation is used to find the diagonal measurement or the rafters theoretical length. The second equation is used to find the rise of the rafter. In order to use these two equations, you need to know four things. Total run, unit run, unit rise, and length of common rafter per foot of run. First is the total run. Total run is half the distance of the total span or width of the building, minus half the thickness of the ridge board material. For our mock-up, the total run is 23 and a quarter inches. Next is the unit run. This number is easy because the unit run for all common rafters is 12 inches. Third is the unit rise. So for every unit of run, which is 12 inches, a rafter will rise a certain amount, which is normally predetermined by a set of plans or codes. However, unit rise can also be determined by you. The higher the number, the steeper the roof. The lower the number, the shallower the roof. So for our mock-up, we're going to be using a 4-inch unit rise. Last is the length of common rafter per foot of run. And this one's easy as well. Because once you've determined your unit rise, which again is 4 inches for our little roof, simply look on a framing square under 4 to find the length of common rafter per foot of run, which is 12.65 inches. Now that we know all the numbers, let's simply plug them in to the equations. Starting with the diagonal measurement equation, 23.25 divided by 12 times 12.65 for a total diagonal measurement of 24.5 inches. Next is the rise. 23.25 times 4 divided by 12 equals 7.75 inches of rise. Therefore, our total run is 23.25, our rafter length is 24.5, and our rise is 7.75. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that these numbers, along with their lines, do not line up with the top side of the rafter, but rather are below the actual rafter height. Almost all the equations and or methods that are used to calculate the length of common rafters all brings us to this same line. And that line has a name and it's called the measuring line. Let's lay out the common rafters first and then I'll come back and we'll talk in more detail about the measuring line. But before we do that, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. For those that don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. Skillshare is a great place to invest in yourself and your personal growth. And if you have specific skills you're trying to learn, Skillshare is a perfect place to start. So I started a diet about five weeks ago, but honestly, I started it without knowing a lot about it. And I tend to do things like that. Anyway, I found a class called the Ketogenic Diet Made Simple and Brady, the instructor, did a fantastic job at teaching me things that I didn't know and should know about the diet, like supplementing with minerals. For me, it was learning more about a diet. For you, it may be something completely different. But if you'd like to make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and connection through creativity, sign up today and the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using my code or the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. Jumping back in, using the numbers we just figured out, lay out a framing square with the four on the tongue side, which is our unit rise, and the 12 on the blade, which is our unit run. Draw a ridge plumb cut line and cut it out using a circular saw. The next number to use is our diagonal measurement, which is 24.5 inches. So measure down from the ridge cut line and draw another line. This line represents the outside building line in the heel cut of the bird's mouth. Generally, the seat cut of the bird's mouth is the same length as the top plate and the exterior sheathing combined, or something really close to that. 
Next, flip the square around so you can measure over for the C cut, draw a line, and this is the bird's mouth which gets cut out. Next, lay out your desired overhang and soffit amount. In our case, that's eight inches over from the outside building line. And then down six and a half inches for the soffit cut and everything with an X gets cut out. The overhang amount and soffit cuts really can vary from roof to roof. It really comes down to personal preference or drawings or specific codes and design and ultimately what size trim you're going to be using on the roof. All right, let's talk more about the measuring line and the rise of 7.75 inches, which for those that are keeping track, we haven't even used that number yet. As far as the measuring line, it's helpful to think of it as a fixed number, meaning that this number is a constant. And the only two numbers that change from roof to roof are the overhang amounts and the deduction for the ridge thickness. The other thing the measuring line does is helps to solve for the total height of the roof which is not the same as the rise we originally solved for. Therefore, in order to get the total height of the roof, we need two things. First, the measuring line, and second, something called the height above plate. If we look back at our original rafter layout, we can still see our outside building line, or what's left over after we've cut out the bird's mouth. The measurement of that line from the corner of the bird's mouth to the top of the rafter is called the height above plate, which for this two by eight rafter is six and an eighth inch. Therefore, if we add the rise of 7.75 inches with the height above plate of six and an eighth, we get a total roof height of 13 and seven eighths. And now you can see by using a framing square and those two simple equations, you too can build your very own common rafter roof. If you'd like to stay up to date on what's happening at Training Hands Academy with courses and many things else I have going on in the shop, please follow me on Instagram. And more importantly, if there is any way that I can pray for you and your family, just let me know. I would love the opportunity to do so. Thank you so much for watching this video. God bless.